Assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to this channel so this is me Ali Vahid and in this video we are going to discuss about the microbiology of water so in the previous lecture we have covered uh, the chapter of microbiology of soil and we have discussed that what kind of organisms are present in your soil but now uh, we are going to discuss that what kind of organisms are present in your water so first of all uh, we are going to define water and we will discuss its importance and then we will start it so first of all, all of you know that water is a transparent fluid which is present in your lakes, in your stream, oceans and as well as in rain. So it covers about 71% of your earth surface is composed of water, is composed of oceans. So uh, therefore the water has a most abundant uh, matter which is present, which is a fluid which is present on your earth surface and it has great importance because it is the medium of life if we cannot survive without it it is essential for the survival as well as the growth of all the organisms which are present on earth uh, uh, whether it is human being whether it is animal whether it is plants so it is present in all the organism about 60 to 70 percent of our bodies is composed of water so therefore they are very helpful and they are very important for various kind of cellular reactions and metabolic reactions which are taking place inside your body now let's discuss about the water microbiology so water microbiology deals with the study of microorganisms which are present in your water and your water is present in your lakes streams oceans and rain now we are going to study that what kind of aquatic microorganisms are present in your water. So you know very well about them. They are bacteria, some viruses, protozoa, fungi and algae. These microorganisms are present in water. Now we are going to study that what are the factors which can affect the growth of these microorganisms. So the first factor is the light. So the microorganisms uh, need light directly or indirectly for their photosynthesis. So there uh, a lot of marine plants are present which make their own food with the help of light. So therefore the availability of light should be very uh, moderate in order to grow them. Second uh, most factor which is important for for them is the temperature so various kind of organisms are present in the water and they need different temperature so there are different optimum temperature set it for them so in the optimum temperature they will show their best growth so here are some temperatures given that uh, some marine uh, animals or organism need a uh, temperature less than 5 degrees centigrade and these microorganisms are called as physiotrophilic microorganisms okay so they need a uh, very low temperature and they grow best at that temperature and about 90 percent of marine organisms are physiotrophic that they need low temperature then uh, second is uh, some organism need a 75 to 80 degrees centigrade and these microorganisms are called as thermophiles and some are hyperthermophilic uh, microorganism and they need temperature above than 80 degrees centigrade and some need temperature of 30 to 40 degrees centigrade and they are called as mesophilic microorganisms so the so the next factor available for them is the sartini. So sartini means the concentration of salts which is present in your water. So most of the organisms are halophilic. Halophilic means that they need an optimum concentration of salt in the water. So therefore uh, ocean water contain a lot of salt in it. So uh, therefore it is very important for the growth of microorganism and the pH for the microorganism should be from 6.5 to 8.5. Uh, pH okay so pH means the concentration of hydrogen ions in your water so now let's discuss about distribution of aquatic uh, organisms so how these aquatic microorganisms are distributed in your lakes and in your ponds so they are uh, divided or distributed on the base of zones which are present in your lake and pond so your lake and any pond is divided into various zones like I am, I have draw a diagram here, and I have mentioned these zones. This, this is the littoral zone. This is limnetic zone, profundal zone, and a benthic zone. So, in various zones, various kind of organism are present. So, in the first zone, which is littoral zone, so littoral zone is consist of this part. Okay, where the plants are present. 
so uh, this part gain a lot of light from the sunlight and uh, grow uh, best with their position they will get water and in the presence of sunlight they will grow and uh, perform their best uh, of them then the second zone is limnetic zone so limnetic zone is shown by this area okay and it consists of algae cyanobacteria and pseudomonas bacteria and are present in that area and most of these bacteria and algae are photosynthetic so they directly gain sunlight and produce their own food then the second zone is profundal zone so in the profundal zone purple and green sulfur bacteria are present they are also phototrophic and they need a moderate amount of sunlight so therefore they are present in the third zone then the last zone is bathnic zone and in the bathnic zone various kind of decomposers are present and one of the decomposers is the species of clostridium so they are decomposing dead matter dead uh, plants and dead animals which are present in it so here is the distribution now we are going to study one by one all the aquatic organisms and we will study their benefits as well as their disadvantages so the first microorganism which is present in your water is a bacteria so let us discuss about their some disadvantages and then we also discuss their importance so uh, here are some bacteria given which can cause a lot of diseases to you so here are some infections or some diseases which are caused by bacteria like vibrio cholerae is present in water it is responsible for causing cholera vibrios is a species of uh, uh, bacteria which is causing gastroenteritis so gastroenteritis is a disease in which your gastric uh, cavity is going to be inflamed or uh, something like that now the next is salmonella typhi bacteria so it is responsible for causing typhoid fever next e coli is causing acute diarrhea and and uh, gastroenteritis uh, some infections in the gastric cavity now let us discuss about the importance of them so they are very very important for the biodegradation for the decomposition of dead organic matter and uh, very useful for the uh, for making new uh, nutrients available in the water next they are maintaining the algal population in your uh, water so whenever the algal population increases the bacteria help it to reduce it so it is maintaining this algal population and make our water healthy it improve the water quantity and second thing is that it decreases the amount of ammonia and nitric oxide which is present in your water and which is not helpful for you so now the second most abundant microorganism which is present in the water is a virus so let us discuss their benefits and disadvantages so rota virus is a virus which is causing enteritis mean uh, various kind of inflammation in jit and also it is causing diarrhea to you hepatitis a virus is present in water and it is due to hepatitis a virus hepatitis e is due to the hev virus which is present in the water and polio virus is also present in your water which is responsible for causing polio disease now let's discuss the importance of them so they are the source of mortality so mortality mean death so they are very very important for the degradation for the converting the dead matter and for making our um, population and for uh, very uh, useful for the evolution process so the uh, old animals and plants which are present in water they will die and the evolution occur and new plants and new animals will form so actually they are producing the space for the new ones by degrading the old ones so and uh, second thing is that they play important role in biogeochemical cycles various biogeochemical cycles we have discussed when we study the chapter of uh, microbiology of soil we have discussed that uh, how bacteria play important role in these cycles so we have discussed four cycles in it uh, we have discussed phosphorus cycle sulfur cycle carbon cycle nitrogen cycle and we have study how in every step bacteria and various kind of viruses and these microorganisms are helpful for it now let us discuss the third uh, microorganism which is present in water this is the protozoa so protozoa are very unicellular organisms with the diameter of 2 to 100 micrometers so uh, the protozoa like plasmodium is present in uh, is, is present which is responsible for causing malaria so this plasmodium will infect uh, the first of all the 
mosquito and then it will transfer uh, this uh, protozoa to um, human beings next is the tts fly so it is responsible for causing a frequent sleeping a sleeping sickness disease they have very important for us like they are the important source of food for the other marine plants and animals they are decomposers and they are helping in recycling of nutrients back to the water now the next type of uh, microorganism which is present is the fungi so ringworm is a fungi which is causing dermatitis they are causing skin infections on you and they cause infection by forming a circular ring on your skin then vaginal candidiasis so they are causing a lot of infections in your vagina and then candida this is a type of yeast a uh, yeast is a fungi and they are causing uh, causing throat infections in you last type of a microorganism is the algae and one thing you will remember that the importance of fungi is just same as the protozoa so they are also the for a source of food they are also act as decomposers and they also act as recycling the nutrients back last is the algae so al the most important algae which is present in water is the blue green algae so they are causing you diarrhea nausea vomiting and cause various kind of eye throat infections to you their importance is just similar they are responsible for the source of food they are decomposers and they are helping the recycling of nutrients so this was all about the today's lecture i hope that you will understand this lecture i hope that this lecture will help you to provide all the information about it so this chapter is completed here i hope that you will like it um, and make sure that you subscribe to this channel and uh, press the bell icon in order to get the notification of all the videos which i uploaded so thank you so much meet you soon in the next lecture till up allah peace